Hi guys, PJ here, back with Gotham Knights, the PC release of a game that has caused, well, some controversy with the press. They're all saying it's a technical mess, it's glitchy, it stutters, it doesn't run very well. In fact, it doesn't look as well as Batman Arkham Knight of many years ago. And if you remember when that launched on PC, that was an absolute disaster. Well, let's take a look of how this runs on a GTX 1660 Ti, 6GB graphics card coupled with a Ryzen 2700. Now that's quite an old CPU, that is a 8 core 16 thread CPU and we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now the game is installed on an NVMe SSD, I've got it recording to a Samsung SSD, a separate one, and I've got Windows 10 Pro installed on another SSD. So there should be no conflicts, nothing you know, to show that it's going to lag or cause any problems as such. We've done the intro sequences, we've done the first missions, bits and bobs, and we're now out in the city. This is the game's default settings that it's decided this graphics card would be comfortable at. Now, we've got a few problems with the hair, as you can see. You've got some uh, really weird dithering look going on with the edges of it. But other than that, the character model looks nice. A little blurry around the face, if I'm very critical, but not bad. Playing wise, well, as you can see, we're above 30 FPS. Now the new consoles are running this at 30 FPS. So it's a pretty taxing game. In fact, the minimum requirement for this game, as you can see, is a 1660 Ti. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty taxing one at best. Okay, let's go and have a, a run round. You can see this, you know, it's up and down, left, right, and yo yo, left, right, and center, yo yoing around. It's um, not good. But we could lock that to a 30 and keep it going. Out of playable area, let me get back in here, guys. I'm just trying to run around and stress it out and show you the city. It does look nice. It's a nice looking game, but we're using 10 gigabytes of RAM and we're using 3.8 gigabytes of GPU memory. The GPU though is only running at 70%, so there is scope. The CPU seems to have one core loaded up pretty heavily and the rest of them are sort of doing the, a bit of their job, so not too bad. Effects and stuff, yep, shadows and reflections, etc. Obviously no ray tracing on this graphics card, but still very good. You know, there's a glow on everything, there's a nice look to the city. Obviously it's raining. We don't have character reflections, which is a shame you would need an RTX for that one. So let's have a quick look at some settings on this. Okay, so just so for the curious out there, it does have a very good photo mode. So if photo mode is your thing, yeah, this game, excellent. Difficulty, very easy, easy, medium, hard. And then your languages, I will stick it down to very easy for this video, otherwise I'm going to get wiped out just running around the corner to show you how good the game looks. English, French, etc. I'll skip through these quick, that's all of them. Not that many on this particular game. There you go, we can go all the way Oops, to the end. Got a few more on the language one there. Go all the way back to the start or I literally won't have a clue what I'm doing. Just like some of the other games that I've done this on accidentally. Online privacy can be changed to public or friends, friends only, private. We'll put it on public. This is the Steam version of the game, by the way, guys. I do believe this is available on Epic. It shouldn't really make any difference whatsoever, but still. Uh, we've got a few other options down here. You can invert your, your camera and stuff like that. So quite a lot. There we go. There's all your, your different stuff. Uh, controls. You may have noticed I'm actually using a PlayStation 5 controller on this. Um, rumble triggers. I haven't noticed them yet, to be honest. I uh, haven't noticed the speaker in the controller doing anything either, so we'll have a go in a minute and see if we can provoke any of that to happen. But yeah, you can also work an Xbox controller, I've had that running on it very well, no problem at all with the Xbox controller, both normal and series that is, so no problem. Mouse keyboard plays on that. If I'm going to be picky, it doesn't feel natural, and that's a really odd thing to say, isn't it? But it just doesn't, you know, it's a controller game, it's um, it's one of those, so that's my opinion on that. And you've got channel configuration, there you go, no 5.1 unfortunately, which is a shame. 
and you've got your voice up there and everything you can have press to talk or fully open or completely off take your pick there's everything graphics this is the biggie game has set to borderless full screen for me it's got windowed as well and borderless like i say absolutely no no full screen on this particular one this is a 1440p monitor so we are running 2560 by 1440 obviously you can change that and improve on the performance at no end because 1440p is quite taxing on a 1660 ti v-sync on or off obviously off for this would be better so we can see what's happening however the game does have screen tearing with it off brightness contrast saturation hdr on or off only works if you've enabled it on windows at the moment i've got it switched off on windows i believe it makes it look a bit weird especially if you're taking screenshots so that's your discretion if you've got a hdr monitor like this particular field one view I'm is really default to play with that and try it out personally yeah, change that horrible the right all the the way colors, but that's windows for you i don't believe that's the game all the way down to dynamic resolution the was what it said well, to on ray it's tracing to off. off it's not well, not on this graphics card it's and seeing as the gpu is only on 70 percent i have an rtx and even then it's that taxing if you, you can put your minimum FPS, your maximum FPS, FPS, you probably want to turn the target, etc. Ocean blur, I need to clue performance value, so if you're struggling, that would be a good one to do. Up preset scaling, quality that it went for was quality sharpening. Okay, so and then we go to advanced. That's what it's defaulted for this card. High textures, medium, 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 low. The density of the environment is how many NPCs and busyness you see running around the place. So if you turn that up, it's probably going to tax things quite a lot. Likewise, if you turn up at shadow quality and texture too, too high, you're also going to absolutely cripple it. I'll give you an example of that. Hopefully it won't have to reload. So I'll stick those two on highest. And we will go quickly across to UI. Yes, apply. Yes, save. Right. There's your UI. So you can turn things on and off at your leisure. Performance stats. That's a useful one. And safe zone fade out etc accessibility well we've got colorblind mode and turn it to different ones i won't even try and understand some of this guys if i'm honest with you hud scale subtitles full caption off etc subtitle size you can go large which is nice they actually do them different sizes look subtitle background alpha you can change that so you can see them text to speech on off or use system settings abilities there's a lot on here that you can change to you know suit it to yourself to how you want it to be which is quite nice so let's have a look at these graphic settings now we've just punched up to the maximum on a couple of them okay so we've turned off vsync but we are running max shadows and a few other bits and bobs not doing too bad but does it need a restart to make it take effect? Let's have a go. Here we are after a restart. So in other words, the graphics settings are still, you know, pretty high, which is a nice thing. VRAM has gone up slightly. We're now over four gigabytes. So if you've got a four gigabyte card, such as a 1650, this is a big no-no, guys. You're going to need it a lot lower. But fps is holding well on this card now we have got shadows and textures turned up to the maximum on this at the moment the tutorials popping up because i've never done this section before when the old batman knight uh, arkham knight even launched driving the car through the city was a horrible stuttery mess that crashed frequently i remember playing it on a few different systems and always got the same sort of problems this seems okay we're holding above 30 it's a bit juttery if we put probably v-sync on we got 25 fps there guys let's uh, see if we can tax it a bit more than 29 it is going down 24 okay we've definitely hit a problem let's see what we can do so just quickly put it back down to the recommended Texture quality is high, shadows medium, everything else on medium. Now, will it hold a 30 with VSync on? Shall we give it a go? Yes, let's apply. Okay, VSync on, and we're still showing 
35 FPS. Twenty six FPS. Not as simple as we originally thought for this game to run smoothly. Like I say, the press have hammered this game for its technical problems, and everyone is waiting for, well, a patch. To be honest, it is playable, but it is a bit juddery. It's definitely not fluid and smooth. It's not bad. But it's not perfect either. It's very up and down the scale. One minute we're on 50 FPS, the next minute we're on 25. So I think my current advice is wait for a patch before you do like dive in and buy this. It's not it's not ready. It's gonna be a good game. I mean the story and plot from what I can see early on is actually excellent. Um, you know, it's got some really good cutscenes, loving the cutscenes. I like the sound and the ambience of it all. The city looks nice but it's a bit too juddery and I wouldn't want to drop the settings down to really horrendous ones because the game is quite the looker. You know, it's what it is. So guys, hopefully that's give you an insight as to how this runs on this type of graphics card. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.